Hey, what's up guys? Working on the 2014 Honda CRV. Gonna show you how to replace the front and rear struts. So first thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and uh, turn the key here. Gonna turn on the wipers and then I'm gonna shut the uh, key off when they're about right here. So turn your key on, turn your wipers on and shut your key off right there. And then you can go ahead and pop your hood down here. So then with your hood open, you can go ahead and take a look here on the driver's side. So the reason I moved those wipers is because normally they would be down and they would be blocking this access port for the uh, upper strut mounts. Um, now I already did this one last night, as you can see right there. That's because I replaced the uh, CV axle seal on this. It was leaking, so I went ahead and just threw a new strut on as well. But I will record the uh, passenger side but I'll just show you here. So what you'd want to do is you got this little tab right here. You can take a trim tool, get up underneath it. You can see that's all that is, just a little clip. Pull this up and then you can pull off this uh, weather stripping. And then you got this little, like I said, access port here. You just pull this off and that gives us access to all of our strut bolts right here. So I'll go ahead and stick this back on since I already did that one. And then I can put this back on just like that. So I'll go ahead and uh, start on the passenger side. So you can see here on the passenger side, the wipers doesn't really matter because it'd be about right here and it wouldn't be blocking it. So it's pretty much just for the driver's side you wanna do that for. But you can get up under here, same thing, pull this off, and then you can uh, undo this. It's getting stuck on there. There we go. Now you can see, same thing, got access to all those top uh, strut nuts there. Next, grab your jack. You got this jack point right here. We're gonna go on that. And then there's a pinch weld right next to this. We'll go ahead and put our jacks in. Then you grab your jack stand. Like I said, just go right on this pinch weld right here. Slowly lower it here. Grab a 19 millimeter, go ahead and remove your lug nuts, your wheel and tire. Next, remove the uh, brake line here from the strut. That's gonna be a 12 millimeter. Okay guys, so I'm also going to be replacing these uh, sway bar links as well. So I'm not going to worry about pulling the one from the upper strut. I'll have to do it down there from the uh, sway bar. But what it is, is uh, it's going to be a 17 millimeter nut. And these can be on there pretty tight. So what you want to do, get your wrench. And then you can take a 6 millimeter Allen. That'll actually fit into the sway bar link there. Maybe. So you can see that'll help keep that from turning if it does start turning on you. And then you can use your wrench and uh, loosen up that nut. So like I said, I'm just gonna take off that bottom one there. Not worry about this one since we're pulling the strut. So I'm just gonna get on it down here. 17 millimeter. And I'm just gonna try this breaker bar. Like I said, these can be pretty tight on here. So you give yourself some room to pull on it here. <clears throat> and I can't tell if that started turning on me or not. And it looks like it is turning on me. So let me try my wrench and uh, 
Allen head here. So you can hold this as you turn it. Once you get that pretty much loose, you should be able to do it by hand now. Take that off. So next we can go ahead and undo our uh, strut to knuckle bolts. So you got a 19 millimeter bolt, and then on this side it's gonna be a 22 millimeter nut. So go ahead and uh, pull those off. All right guys, so what I'm gonna do next is just kind of get a jack underneath here just to kind of support that because when we pull out those strut bolts, uh, this is gonna want to drop just a little bit. So you can just go right underneath the uh, bob joint here. Just like that, just to kind of hold it. And then you can go ahead and try and pull out your strut bolts here. They might be a little hard to get out. If they are, you just move this back and forth. Pull them out that way. So then come back up top here and you're gonna have five 13 millimeter nuts we need to remove. So go ahead and do that. And this last one's kind of hard to get to. You may need to use a magnet just to get it off of there. Okay, so before we pull the strut out, I forgot to pull that out of the sway bar link. So what I'm gonna have to do is just jack this up a little bit so I can slide that out of there. So I'm just gonna put one of these bolts back in here for now. like that and then let me just jack this up go a little more there, slide that out now what I'm gonna do is slowly bring this down some So I can get that bolt out again. And then I almost forgot, we need to remove this uh, ABS wheel speed sensor line here from the strut. So you got this rubber plug that just undoes there like that. Take your uh, trim tool here, get up underneath this clip. Just be careful because this will break. These become pretty brittle here. Just try and work that out slowly. Just like that. Now let's go ahead and lower this a little more. Okay, so now we should be able to get it out. Let me try going down a little more with my jack here. Let's see if that's enough. So just kind of separate this. Again, watch your brake line here. Grab that. And then as you guys are doing this, you just want to be careful. You don't want to put too much strain on the CV axle either. So just make sure that doesn't pop out too far. You may have to just jack that up a little bit just to kind of hold it there. So we're good right there. Okay guys, let's go ahead and take a look at our new parts here. So I went with the uh, full assemblies, the Monroe. Uh, quick strut 272 492 that's going to be for the driver's side and that's the one 
right here that I did last night. Like I said, I replaced the CV axle seal on that side. So I went ahead and just threw the uh, new one on while I was in there. So if you guys are interested in that video, check that out. And then for the uh, one I just pulled off, the passenger side, the right side, that's going to be 272491. I got these off of Amazon. I'll put a link in the description for them. And for the fronts, I prefer to use the full assembly. It's a lot easier. Plus, you get a uh, brand new bearing and everything. Since that is the steer wheel, it's nice to have that new bearing. You can buy all those separate and reuse your spring. But by the time you do that, it costs as much as a full assembly. So, And then also, um, these are going to be the sway bar links. K750297. Got these off Amazon. And that's the same part number for both sides. So that's what those look like. And these are greasable. And uh, these do come with new top nuts as well for the struts. So let's go ahead and stick that strut in. So then grab a new strut, go ahead and try and feed it up in there. And I'm gonna kind of lift it up in here and then I'll go up top here, try to get at least a few of them started. Get it up there. Like I said, get a few of these started. So you can see I got a couple of those started. So you can just kind of maneuver this a little bit. Try to get the rest of these on here. This one back here is kind of hard. Especially getting it started. Thing. This one's going to be kind of hard to get on there. But if you get it close, grab your... And actually these are 15 millimeter. The older ones are 14. So let me grab a socket. Grab your 15 millimeter and you can just go ahead and get these kind of hand tight for right now. Now let's see if we can get this uh, steering knuckle into the new strut here. Just kind of rotate it. And if you take a look, it's kind of hard to see, but you can see we need to jack this up a little bit to get those uh, holes aligned. Just kind of jack it up as much as you need to. About right there. Grab your bolts here. This lower one, you may need to pull out on the strut like that to get it through. Grab your two nuts. Now we'll go ahead and tighten these up. And then if you guys want to torque those, you can. It's going to be right around 115 foot-pounds. Then you get your brake line fed back on here. 12 millimeter bolt. Come over here to the other side. Get your uh, clip back in there. Actually, I'll put this rubber one on first. 
And then you can stick this back in there. Next, go ahead and grab your sway bar link. Go ahead and get this inserted into the sway bar first. Get that through there. Get your nut on here. And uh, this new nut's gonna be 18 millimeter. And then you can get a wrench right here, which is also gonna be an 18 millimeter. So let's go ahead and tighten that up real quick. Let's get that tight. Next, we need to uh, connect the upper portion here. So what you want to do is just uh, go ahead and start jacking up with your jack here. Until you get close to where you need to be. About right there. Same thing, go ahead and tighten that up. Get those nice and snug. If you want to, you can torque those. And I think it's right around 40 foot pounds. Uh, but that bottom one's gonna be hard to get a torque wrench on. So I just go pretty tight on them, about what 40 foot pounds would be. And then you go ahead and take some grease. Just go ahead and squirt a few squirts of grease into these. This one, just maybe three or four is all. Doesn't take much because there's already a little bit in there. And you can just wipe these off. That way you don't get dirt and grime sticking to the zerks for when you grease them next time. Okay guys, since it's still jacked up, it's pretty much acting like the weight of the vehicle is on the strut. So I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, make sure these are tight. I'm just gonna go by hand. I think these are around like 30 foot pounds. It's really not much. So I'm just gonna kind of guesstimate on them. That should be good like that. And then uh, we'll go ahead and check those one more time once we lower it to the ground, just to make sure. So then you go ahead and get your jack out of here. Next, go ahead and get your uh, wheel and tire put back on. Grab your jack, let's go ahead and get that under there and jack it up and then we can lower it. Grab your torque wrench, torque your lug nuts to 80 foot pounds. Now with that lowered to the ground, just go ahead and double check, just to make sure these are tight. And then you go ahead and take your uh, little trim piece here, your cowl. Try to get that snapped in there. Like that and then your uh, little clip here for this molding just stick that in and then this piece of molding right there all right guys so that's all there is pretty much to the fronts like i said i did that other side last night so let's go ahead and uh, move on to the rear okay guys so to gain access to the rear what you're going to need to do is uh, go ahead and lift up on your seat here and then you can go ahead and maybe fold that down just a little bit. But we need to access this panel here, so we need to take this off. So what you can do is get your, your hand down in here. So get up under here, and what you're going to do is lift up. 
and this will just kind of unsnap here. So let me show you. Get the seat belt out of the way. So it's going to sound like it's going to break, but it's not. So just lift with your fingers here. You can see that kind of pops free. And then you can kind of just lift this out of here. Just like that. And now we got access. So you got a bolt there. And then another one right back there. So I'll go ahead and do the same to the other side really quick. All right guys, so let's go ahead and jack up the rear. I'm gonna go run right underneath this uh, center cross member here, and then we can put our jack stands on the side there. So go ahead and grab a couple jack stands and I'm gonna set them right underneath this jack point here. And as you can see, I went pretty high up with the jack. That's cause I'm gonna try to get the strut from underneath here and then just kind of slide it out. So you wanna go kind of high with your jack and get your jack stands under here. We'll go ahead and lower it. And then pull your wheel and tire off. All right guys, so to get this uh, strut out, we're gonna need to uh, first go ahead and remove these two 17 millimeter bolts that's holding this uh, forward control arm on. So let's go ahead and do that. So next we can go ahead and remove the uh, strut bolt going through the bottom there. And if you take a look here, it's kind of hard to see. But you can see right there. So that nut is welded onto the frame there. So you don't have to worry about that side. All we need to do is pull out this 17 millimeter bolt right there. So let's go ahead and do that. And then it might be kind of hard to get out. So we may need to wiggle this. like that so what you want to do next is hop inside here and you got two 14 millimeter nuts holding the top of the strut on so go ahead and remove those so now we should be able to just kind of maneuver this out of here you may need to take a pry bar just pry it inside here and help get it out of here. And should be able to just drop it down. Okay guys, so for the rears, I just bought the uh, strut, not the whole assembly. So I will reuse the uh, spring, the boot, and then the mount. Like I said earlier on the front, I prefer the full assembly because it comes with a new bearing and mount and everything. But on the rears, you know, you're not using this to steer, so it doesn't really matter too much. Um, so it's cheaper just to do the strut. So what I rented uh, from O'Reilly's is uh, this strut spring compressor, 67051. I'll put a link in the description for it. So we need to go ahead and uh, compress the spring so we can get that uh, mount off of there. So what you do, just pull these off, pull these out, and it's going to be hard to get in here because this spring is so small. So what I'm going to do is pretty much just compress from this spring to here. Get your mount like that, and then you go ahead and start tightening this.
So it should look something like that. Just want to make sure it's not going to rub on that or your socket or something's not going to hit that. So then we'll go ahead and set the other one on the other side. Do the same thing. So kind of like that, you want it to be opposite of the other one. Get your keepers on there. Go ahead and tighten that one up. Okay, so it should look something like that. Then grab a 19 millimeter. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slowly tighten each one of these. So I'll start on this one a little bit, transfer over to that one. Go back and forth, tight, trying to tighten this spring up evenly. Okay, so that should be good. So it should look something like that. So what you want to do now is we need to remove this nut here. And uh, that's gonna be a 14 millimeter. And if that's where it starts spinning on you, you can stick a five millimeter Allen wrench in there. So I'm just gonna do that because usually it'll start spinning on you. So go ahead and loosen this. And just go ahead and remove that nut. And then you can pull that nut off and then this washer will come off with it. And then you can pull the mount off, just slide that off. And then what you can do, is just pull out this whole strut. The boot may or may not come with it, but it's all right. You can pull that off. And then we'll need to pull off this uh, washer and then the bump stop here. So you can just take a hammer. This may be kind of stuck on there. Pull that off. And then we'll go ahead and grab our new strut. Okay guys, so the ones I went with were the uh, Monroe OEM Spectrums. Got these off Amazon, part number 72957. And it's going to be the same part number for both sides. Let's go ahead and pull this out of here. So there's our strut. It is compressed, so we'll have to undo it. And then this is probably going to be a new top nut for up here. Okay, guys, so grab your new strut here. And, uh... Like I said, it comes compressed from the factory just for shipping, but you just follow this right here. So you just turn the shaft uh, counterclockwise and this will slowly come up on you. So you can use just like a crescent, that's what I did. So you just take that and you just twist it and then it'll start coming up. And then what I like to do is I just, uh, I'll just compress this with my hand. I'll do this a few times just to get that oil flowing correctly. So once you do that, you can get your uh, bump stop here. That's gonna go like that. And then if you take a look at this washer, you got this side here that's uh, kind of raised. That's gonna go down towards the bump stop. So it'll stop right there. And then you can take your boot here, slide your boot on, get it through. And then you wanna take this around. Let's see. So it's gonna go on there like that because you can see it kind of stops right there. But once we get the spring on there, it'll compress that down. So then you can go ahead and stick this through. And you wanna turn it because you can see the spring stops there, which is gonna stop 
down here. So just turn this to where it's sitting there, kind of like that. So you know, the spring stops there. Take this, and you can see there's a washer inside here. So that's going to go on there like that. And you can go ahead and get your mount on here. And you also pay attention to where the spring stopped on this. So you can see that indention there. So you want it to line up right there. So get this on. It's going to sit on there kind of like that. So try to get that kind of lined up there. And then what you do, is you got this washer here. You can stick that on. Open up this package here. And will give you a new nylon lock nut for that. So you may have to just kind of Press this down on there like that. And then get your nut started here. So now let's go ahead and start tightening that nylon lock nut. And then this is uh, actually a different size. It's gonna be a 17 instead of a 14. So start tightening that, but you can see it's starting to turn on me. So just take your crescent or a pair of pliers just to hold that and let's go ahead and start tightening that down. So just tighten that to where it pretty much won't tighten anymore and you should be good. So now we can go ahead and uh, start loosening these. But like I said, make sure this is, cause you see it can turn. So just make sure that's all the way up against there. And then uh, kind of like how I did before, I'm just going to loosen up one side, then do the other side, and then just keep uh, swapping back and forth. So something like that. And then you can pull these off. Just like that. Let's go ahead and uh, stick this in the car now. So go ahead and grab a new strut here. Kind of just feed it up through here. You may need to press down on this just to get it kind of locked up there. And then you can come back up in here and let's just go ahead and get these kind of started on here just so they're holding them holding that up and i'll just go ahead and kind of just get them snug so now we need to try to get the uh strut here lined up with this hole so you may need to grab a uh, just a mallet and we'll try hitting this in here something kind of like that and let's see if we can get our bolt kind of started through there If I can get it kind of started here, it may not be lined up all the way. Yeah, it looks like we're gonna have to wiggle this around a little bit here. Okay, guys, so it's kind of hard to see the bolt in there, but you can see it's kind of off. So, what I'm having to do 
Let's take this pry bar and I'm prying right here. It's kind of moving that strut and everything. And then you can kind of get that through. So just like that, and I'll go ahead and grab my impact here. Next, we're going to need to lift this lower control arm back up. So what we're going to do is uh, jack up right underneath the strut there. Like I said, just jack up right underneath the strut there. We just need to raise this a little bit to get those bolts started. About like that. So then go ahead and try to get these started up in here. And you may need to like shove this forward a little bit. Just to get that started. Same with the other one here. You may need to push up on that. Just get a few threads in there. So now with those started, you can go ahead and use your socket wrench or your impact. Go ahead and get those zapped up in there. Then you can go ahead and lower your jack here. Get that out of the way. And then if you want, you can grab your torque wrench just to make sure these are torqued. And those are going to be uh, 54 foot-pounds. And then just check your uh, strut bolt there on the bottom. That's going to be 64 foot-pounds. Okay guys, so before I go ahead and lower it and then uh, make sure those ones up top are tight, I'm gonna go ahead and get the uh, passenger side done here really quick so we can lower it all at the same time. Okay, so as you can see, got the passenger side all done, got my wheel and tire back on as well. And uh, it's the same exact procedure as the other side. So now let's go ahead and uh, lower it. So go ahead and get your jack back up under here, pull our jack stands and go ahead and lower it. Then grab your torque wrench, torch your lug nuts to 80 foot pounds. So once you get the wheels torqued, you can come back inside here and just make sure these are nice and tight. I don't I think the torque really isn't much at all. So just get them kind of snug. that so then go ahead and grab your uh, cover here and we'll get this kind of in place and it kind of just slides down in just watch your carpet and all that here so get it in place and then you should just be able to kind of smack it down and that just clips into place like that All right guys, so one last thing you'll want to do is go ahead and get an alignment done. Uh, anytime you replace struts, you always want to get the alignment done. Just in case it's off a little bit, you don't want your tires to start wearing unevenly. And uh, that's pretty much going to wrap up the video. Again, this was a 2014 Honda CRV. Went ahead and replaced the front and rear struts along with the stabilizer links as well. And uh, if you guys haven't already, why don't you subscribe to my channel, check out some of my other videos. I'll have quite a few on this car alone, so check those out once I get them uploaded, and I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.